Hey everyone, welcome to the first official tutorial of 2024 with the Digital Academy. In today's video, we'll be looking at working with Blender and what it took to create the short scene using this free 3D software. Blender is a powerful tool on its own, but when combined with other production systems, it can produce even greater results. I'll walk you through the process of getting familiar with Blender, navigating the interface and creating geometry in a 3D space. Understanding how to move around and at the very least access the Blender Kit toolbar is going to streamline just how quickly you can create. At first glance, Blender can be quite intimidating to new users and revolting to basic interface users that may not be familiar with customizable operating systems and software. The default tools are powerful but are compartmentalized by discrete tabs and icons that tell you their function when you hover over them. The system settings and preferences also offer a long list of personalization features from user interface themes, community developed add-ons, and computing power distributing preferences. With a growing user base and developer community, Blender updates existing tools as well as introduces experimental and robust package enhancers. The native render modes offer distinct features in the final outputs, leaning more into photorealism with cycles and non-realism with EV. In all, it gives you access to some of the major production methods used in the industry for simulations, animations, motion graphics, and much more. To be fair though, Blender is notorious for its customizable workspace, but it's also known for the long list of user shortcuts that are meant to make your creative experience even more streamlined. Not having quite the handle on the shortcuts doesn't stop you from accessing all of its tools though. The standard way to navigate Blender is by using the left mouse button, middle mouse button, and right mouse button and dragging the mouse. These three functions allow you to rotate, zoom, and pan around the objects in your scene and will be useful when moving objects into position or detailing a feature or a space. To move objects in Blender, select the object you want with the left mouse button and press G on the keyboard. This activates the transform mode. When the object is in this mode, it can be moved along any of three axes, the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. When you combine the use of the mouse and keyboard, you're not only able to move the position of objects and characters, but you're able to move your position of interest simply with the click of a mouse. To make things even simpler, to ensure that the object that you've selected is in fact the one that you want, press the period or full stop button on your numpad. This should snap your view to whatever objects you've highlighted and you're able to either edit or move the object from there. Creating objects to move and build your scenes with can be found using the shortcut Shift A. This should activate the Mesh option dropdown, which shows you a number of different objects that you can use. Add an object from the list to your scene by clicking the one that you want and it should appear wherever you have the 3D cursor. These are objects when you select them with the left mouse button can be modified and edited by pressing the tab button on your keyboard. This puts Blender into edit mode, where you can edit a mesh or geometry via manipulating its vertices, edges, or faces. If you don't think that you have the time or patience to turn the idea that you have in your mind from a primitive shape into a well-defined 3D model, then fear not. Blender has tools in place for non-destructive scene and world assembly, specifically the Blender Kit add-on, which is a free add-on that provides a portal to an online 3D asset library ready for world building. Now that you've managed to move around and add some objects and stage your scene, let's touch on the importance of lights. In Blender, you have the options of several different kinds of lights. The most influential of the light sources would be the HDRI or the world lighting. This uses high dynamic range images to reproduce the values of the lighting conditions captured from real environments. Second to this would be the various types of manual lights, the sun lamp, the area lamp, spotlight and point lamp, that we can add and position to our advantage. Using lights to illuminate, frame, and even sculpt details is a huge deal in 3D. And making light your best friend across the board is always going to position you for the best results. Animations are created by selecting an object, pressing I on the keyboard, and selecting the location rotation option. To set your first key, telling Blender to let the animation start from that point, by moving the object from one point to another and pressing the I key again and selecting location rotation, you would have now set your animation keys and can hit the play button to watch the animation. This concept applies to all of the different types of animations that you can make inside of Blender, including the camera animation. 
The more complex the animation, the more time and tools needed to perfect it. And one tool that can help you with your character animation is the free motion capture data website, Mixamo. By signing up for Mixamo for free, you'll be able to access over 300 different animated actions, poses, gestures, and even some character skins. This is really useful for animators or 3D artists that want to focus on building their scenes thoroughly without having to worry about believable character animations. To use it, once you've created your account, browse some of the options and found a skin or rig that you like, simply hit the download button, select the file type, frame rate, and if to export the animation data from Mixamo with any of the character skins, once you've downloaded the file, import the FBX file into Blender by going to File, Import, and then FBX, and bring the data into the scene. Once done right, it should bring the animations in with the settings that you gave them inside of Mixamo. A cool side note, Blender actually has a Mixamo add-on that makes this process faster, but this is the way that you'd use it even outside of just Blender. With your objects, animations, and lights in your scene, now we look at texture, shaders, and materials. The geometry of an object is only going to give us the shape and form. Depending on the level of detail of the mesh itself, you can sometimes see the discernible details of a character, creature, or environment, but this is usually made even more believable when textures and materials are applied to the 3D objects. Textures and shaders can come in varying size and qualities, ranging from hyper-realistic materials to cel-shaded cartoony materials. Different textures would require certain steps to help you arrive at a final place. When using image textures, adjusting parameters like diffuse, roughness, normal map, and ambient occlusion are usually necessary via Blender's node-based shader editor. However, you can create materials inside of Blender called shaders that don't require image input and is built entirely inside of Blender using a combination of various nodes. Depending on the kind of animations you're doing or depending on the level of realism needed in a scene, your project would usually dictate what kind of texturing or shader building would be needed. To texture objects, hit the tab key on the keyboard and make sure to select the faces mode in edit mode. With the faces of your object selected, press U to unwrap the model and select the cube projection or whatever kind of projection that you need based on the shape of your model. Once unwrapped, hit tab again and now your model is ready to receive materials. Where to find materials? The great news is there are a ton of free resources online that offer a variety of shaders, textures, and materials for all your projects. And thankfully, the Blender Kit add-on comes with its own set of models, materials, lights, and HDRIs. To download the Blender Kit add-on, visit the link in the description below and download the zip file. Once downloaded, don't open the zip file, but go back to Blender, go to Preferences, Add-ons, and, and click the Install button found to the top of the window. Find where the zip file is and hit open. After a few seconds, the add-on should be active with a tick inside of Blender and you just see the Blender Kit search bar show up. Go to the Materials tab and search for any kind of material that you need. Set the search filter to free and voila. You can now drag and drop the materials onto your 3D objects. Using Blender Kit, you can search for any 3D model, special lights or unique materials all from one search point. The drag and drop accessibility allows you to swap models and shaders with real-time previews, giving you a creative edge. Once you've staged your scene, animated your objects and characters, lit your environment and applied your materials, now we move into rendering. Rendering is a process of using the CPU, GPU, or both inside of Blender to build out and compute the data in the final frames. This means producing a final playable format outside of the 3D software that shows all of the elements playing together smoothly Without rendering the scenes, the animations would only be viewable inside of the software. But with rendering, you're able to view it on your phone or computer just like this. To render your animations, go to the Scene Info tab where you can find the screen resolution, output format, frame rate, and where to save your rendered animation. When you adjust these settings to your desired settings, simply go to the top of the Blender toolbar and find Render. Select it and hit Render Animation. Immediately, Blender will shift into render mode and will use either your CPU, graphics card, or both to build out each and every final frame, bringing your colors, motions, and effects to life. This was a really brief look into how to use Blender to create 3D scenes and animations, combining Blender, Blender Kit, and Mixamo. By using a similar process, you can create scenes that exceed your wildest imagination and officially become one of the newest Blender artists to bring something fresh to the table. 
In part two, we're going to look into the whys and hows of this process. We'll be discussing how materials behave and react to light, why modifiers are useful, and what to look out for as your scenes become more advanced. So look out for it and save it for later, even if you can't watch it right away. If you like today's tutorial, subscribe to the Digital Compass Creative Studios YouTube channel for more free tutorials and classes on pre-production, production, and post-production. We will be uploading the rest of our 24 for 24 tutorial package on VFX animation and CGI, where Blender is our main engine. Thanks for watching today's episode, guys, and remember to stay focused, to stay consistent, and remember to follow the compass. Thanks, guys.